When you first find out that you're pregnant, you got to understand it is important that you have the right medical team. You want the right people on your side. You want to feel good. You want to feel comfortable. You want to feel safe. And more importantly, you want to feel heard. Here are some things to think about when you're choosing the right people to be a part of your birth team. So let's talk about who should be on your birth team. <laughs> so your birth team should be comprised of people who are going to support you, who are going to comfort you, and who can confidently, when you can't, stand up and advocate for you. So although you may want your partner in the birth room, they may not be the best person there for you if they can't speak up for you. You may, not, you may want mom there, but maybe mom has too much anxiety. Maybe sister in love or mother in love just doesn't have too much love that day. You want to make sure that it is the person that makes you feel safe, makes you feel seen, supported, and heard. It may not be the person that you want, but it needs to be the person that's going to be able to stand up for you. So definitely don't make an emotional decision when it comes to choosing people that are your support persons. Make this decision that's best for you and that you know that you're going to be okay with after delivery is over. Your perfect birth team will consist of a midwife, a doula, and your provider. We should all be in collaboration with each other, not competition. Midwives are phenomenal as a part of your birth team, and they have been shown to have better birthing outcomes, especially for people of color. Your provider, your provider should literally come in if there's a challenge, if there's an issue or if there's a problem. And your doula, your doula is your extra support person, your extra helping hands. So those three together is a beautiful team. It's a beautiful triad working together. And as the birthing person, you are at the center. So this is beautiful when we talk about patient-centered care. So you're at the center and your team surrounds you and they work in collaboration with each other, not competition. Your birth team can change depending on where you decide you wanna give birth. If you're in a hospital, hospital giving birth, your team can change, meaning you can start out the shift with one set of team, and then the shift can change and you can get another set of care for takers. In a birthing center, you most often will have your midwife there and you can have your support persons, which could be in the form of family and friends. And it's a calm environment, but you still have an exam room if you need that. At home, of course, it's free for all. You can invite whomever you want to your home birth because it's your home, it's your space. And you get to decide who, where, and when. When you're trying to build a birth team, and your insurance does not give you a lot of options. I want you to call your insurance agency, speak with your representative about what it is that you actually have access to. A lot of people don't know that there are things that insurances provide access to, but because we don't use them often, we don't know that they're there. And the insurance companies are not gonna rag a, <laughs> wave a red flag and say, hey, I'll give you this. So call, speak with the representative and say, hey, I'm pregnant or I'm trying to conceive. What are my options? What things are available to me? Would you pay for a midwife? Will you pay for childbirth education classes? How long do you pay for me to actually stay in the hospital? Can I use a birthing center? Are there any reimbursements for me? Ask those different questions to see how they can be supportive of you throughout your pregnancy journey. As a Black mom, I want you to understand it is very important that you find the right medical team. Ultimately, you want to make sure you have someone who is on your side. If you are at 35 years or older or advanced maternal age, you want to have a provider that supports that. If you decide, hey, I had a cesarean with my first birth, I want to try vaginally this time, find a provider that supports you in that. If you decide, I want to have a non-medicated birth, then you want to provide a, have a provider that actually supports that as well. So literally, you want somebody who supports how you feel and what you feel and your desires for your birth. Interview providers. Check out your local hospitals. You can even see if you can tour the local hospitals. See if they have an L&D, which is a labor and delivery unit. See if they have a NICU, which is a neonatal intensive care unit. See what the hospital feels like, how the vibe is. Do they feel receptive? Are they warm? Are they inviting? Or does it feel cold and dark and afraid? Think about how you feel when you walk into this hospital, into this facility, because that's how you're going to feel on your labor day. So it's never too soon to plan ahead. Some red flags that you can look out for to determine whether or not these are your people when it comes to looking for a healthcare provider are pretty obvious. Are they listening to what you're saying? 
do they even understand what's happening or what's going on? I mean, do they even know it's a Black maternal health crisis? Do they even care? And what are they doing about it? Look at the staff. Is the staff diverse? Is there people of color anywhere? Think about how they make you feel when you walk in. Are they smiling? Do they greet you? Do they ask you questions about how you're feeling? Are they rushing out? Are they looking at their laptops the entire time that you're in there? Are they listening to your questions? Are they answering your questions? Or are they just talking all over you? Think about how you feel when you're in the presence of the provider. Do you feel calm? Do you feel reassured? And do you feel safe? Or do you feel timid? Do you feel scared? Do you feel totally disregarded? Do you feel like this is a transaction? Think about how you feel. Don't ignore that feeling because that feeling is there for a reason and it's telling you something. You should listen to it. When you're talking to potential care providers and you're interviewing them and you're looking for a provider for your birth, you want to be bold. You want to go in and you want to ask the questions that are truly on your heart. Do you know there's a Black maternal health crisis? What are you doing about that? Are you adding to the problem or are you actually trying to help? What can you do to make me feel safe? What percentage of black and brown people do you serve? What exactly are you doing to increase cultural competency with yourself and your staff? What are you doing to make more black women feel safe in your environment, in your hands, in your care? What are you doing to make sure that yourself and your staff are culturally competent. And once you take these trainings, if you are taking trainings, how do you measure cultural competency? What type of follow-up are you having? Do you send out surveys? Have you surveyed your clients of color to see how they actually feel about your care? Tell me how that's working for you. Be very bold when you go in. Ask these questions. Don't be timid, don't be shy, and don't shrink back. Because we can't make change if we're not communicating and we're not speaking up for ourselves. Be yourselves, be colorful. Don't change yourself for the system. Be who you are. Don't stoop yourself to their level. Make them rise up to where you are. In order to have the best possible birth outcomes, you have to be comfortable communicating what you want and what you don't want with your birthing team. You literally have to speak up for yourself. You have to say, I would like this. I would not like that. What can we do together to make sure that I have the best possible outcome? What can I do? Also, what can you do? How can we meet each other halfway? How can we collaborate on this journey? How can we guide each other throughout this journey? Not only should you be listening to your provider, but your provider should be listening to you because what you want matters and you want to make sure that you guys are working as a team to get the best possible birth outcome for yourself and your baby. When it comes to language, especially in communication with your provider or your birth team, you want to think about what you're saying and how you're saying it. Remember, this is your body and your baby and it's totally your journey. So you don't have to go in ten minutes shy and say, can I do this? May I have this? Is it possible? You want to be assertive. You don't have to be aggressive, but you need to be assertive and you need to be forward. You need to say, I plan to have a non-medicated birth. I plan to birth at a birthing center. I plan to have a midwife. How can we work together on those things? You don't walk in and say, can I have a midwife? Can I have a non-medicated birth? At that point, you're giving your power away and you're handing it over to someone else to tell you what you can and cannot do or can and cannot have with your own birth experience. So be careful with language. Language can literally dictate your path and how you go. Always remember, this is my baby, my body, and my journey, not someone else's. They are there to help me, not the other way around. Literally, we pay this system. So are you paying people to take care of you or are you paying people to mistreat you? When you're communicating with your providers throughout your entire pregnancy, because remember communication is an ongoing thing, you wanna make sure that you're continually reminding them of what you want, what you're looking for and how you're feeling. Continue to put them in remembrance of what your birth preferences are. Continue to remind them where you plan to birth. Continue to remind them how you're feeling. Continue to ask questions throughout the process of things that you don't understand. Never nod your head and say, mm-hmm, and okay, if it's really not okay and if you really don't understand. Never leave confused and never leave without your questions being answered. If you feel like you're a person that may forget the questions, as they come to you throughout the day, throughout the week, write them down, even put them in your phone. 
So that way, when you go to your doctor's visit, you can pull out that piece of paper and you can pull out your phone so that way you can get your questions answered. If you're having a disagreement with your provider, take the time and think about where the disagreement is starting from. Is this on your part? Is this on your provider's part? Are you totally in disagreement with something that your provider wants you to do? Think about what it is and discuss the disagreement with your provider and let them know, hey, I feel like we're in disagreement here, but I want to come to a solution and I want to come to a solution that benefits me and my baby. I may disagree with you, but if it's safe for me and my baby, this is how I want to proceed. Make sure that you're not just succumbing to what they want you to do. If you're in disagreement, but you still feel comfortable with your decision, then stand behind your decision. Don't allow someone to pressure you into doing something that you don't want to do or that you don't feel comfortable with. And also speak with your tribe about it. If you have a doula, discuss it with your doula. If you have a midwife, discuss it with your midwife, discuss it with your partner, see how other people feel about the decision. But definitely speak with your provider about the disagreement and try to come to a solution because ultimately you don't want to take that same energy into the birth room with you and your baby.